Welcome to the short screencast in which we're going to take this uh, graph here, uh, which shows the uh, a person's walking distance. Uh, this is a person that's walking from his dorm room, and it shows his distance as a function of time. Down here on the horizontal axis, we have time since leaving the dorm room in minutes. And on the vertical axis, we have distance from the dorm room in feet. And what we're going to try to do here is produce a graph of this person's speed uh, as a function of time. So to do this, we're going to have to look at each of these individual line segments. Uh, as you can see, the distance graph is composed of straight line segments and figure out what the person's speed was on each line segment. Now, one thing we can notice, for example, is on each line segment we see uh, like for example from here uh, time equals zero to time equals one minute uh, it is a straight line segment and so his distance is changing at a constant rate uh, that's a linear function at least between zero and one and so his speed his rate of change is just going to be the slope of that line so I'm gonna just start making uh, just some annotations on the graph here from zero to one uh, the speed uh, I'm just gonna go read off the slope the slope uh, and so in one minute, he travels 200 feet, and that's a constant speed, so it's 200 feet per minute. 200 feet per minute. We'll just assume these, these are going to be the same units throughout, so I'll just write the numbers uh, for the other uh, uh, intervals here. Now from 1 to 2, uh, we notice that his distance does not change at all. Uh, so uh, assuming he's not running around in circles, his speed would now be 0 feet per minute on that interval. From 2 to 3, uh, it's the same speed in some ways, uh, magnitude of speed, as it was from 0 to 1. He, in one minute, he traveled 200 feet, but it's backwards. His, his uh, distance has decreased. The slope here is not 200, it's negative 200. Okay. On each of these little pieces, in other words, the basic concept here is that we're going to read off the speed by just looking at the slope. And so from 3 to 4, we can do that. Uh, it's one minute and a change of 300 feet, so that's 300 feet per minute. And then finally, it's moving really fast here. In one minute, he went from 300 feet to 900 feet. That's a change of that's a total change of 600 feet in one minute. So the speed is 600 feet per minute. Okay, now we're going to go over and try to draw the graph of speed. I'm just going to set up a, a couple of axes here. I want to make this look good, you know, so I'm going to uh, now put some uh, hash marks on here, some scaling. This is going to be the time axis, uh, time in minutes. I always want to label my axes, put the units on it, and if I have a variable attached, I'm going to put that on there too. And this axis is going to be, again, not distance, but speed. And the units in this, uh, we're, we can just call this V for velocity, and the units are in feet per minute. Now let's put some scaling on here. Um, I think I'm going to use the same time scaling, uh, 0 to 5 minutes. So let's make that 1, get them evenly spaced, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And as far as the speeds go, actually, I don't think I went down far enough on the uh, speed axis, do you? Uh, I need to. I have some negative speeds coming up, so I'm going to make that a little bit deeper there as, than it was. And uh, the speeds go from negative 200 to plus 600, so let's do it like this. I'm going to make this negative 200 feet per minute, and the uh, same distance but up would be 200 feet per minute. And then this will be 4, and that will be 600 feet per minute. Okay, so now we have a well-constructed graph, and I should give it a title, uh, speed versus time, like so. And now uh, we need to start drawing. I'm going to change my color for this. Now, the thing to notice is, on each one-minute interval we see here, the uh, person is traveling the same speed. His speed does not fluctuate uh, from... Uh, for, at all during any of these intervals. So over the first minute, his speed was always 200 feet. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line. I'm going to make this a little bit thicker so it will stand out. A horizontal line, horizontal line from 0 to 1. His speed neither goes up nor goes down during this one minute period. It is constantly fixed at 200 feet per minute. So I don't want to draw something that goes up to 200 and then back down because his speed does not go up or back down. It's, it's locked in constantly at 200 feet per minute. That's an important idea. Uh, this is going to be a flat uh, line segment, horizontal line segment from 0 to 1. Now, likewise, we can draw the rest of these fairly quickly now. Uh, over the z 1 to 2 minute interval, he's traveling 0 feet per minute, so I'm going to kind of darken that in. It would be a uh, constant 0 speed. That's drawn just slightly up, up above the t-axis, just so you can see the blue stuff. From 2 to 3, it's a constant 200, negative 200 feet per minute. Okay, from here to here. 
from three to four, it's 300 feet per minute. So that's about halfway between. That's exactly halfway between 200 and 400. And then from four to five, it's all the way up here at 600. I'm trying to make these horizontal lines parallel. Right, so that's what the speed graph will look like. It's not a smooth or connected graph, what we will eventually call continuous graph, uh, because the speeds don't change uh, on each individual uh, one minute segment. Again, doesn't change here to here, it's always 200 feet per minute. Doesn't change here to here, it's always zero feet per minute. So when we don't see something kind of going up, arcing down, we have to resist the temptation to connect the points with a smooth connected curve. It's just not how it works out here. Now a good question at the end of this would be how do you handle the, uh, the end points here? Well, um, we would have to think about when I look at these little juncture points here between the intervals, like take this first one here at time equals one, okay, uh, does the person have a single speed there at time equals one? Now, a human being actually walking around will have a speed, and it won't be just an instantaneous change from, I mean, people who are really walking around do not go from 200 feet per minute to a dead stop in zero time, okay, uh, that's just against the laws of physics, but in this graph here, uh, we're going to try to draw it true to the graph, you know, so what we're going to do is think about uh, the slope at this point. And this is a corner point, and it's kind of hard to tell exactly what the slope is at a corner. Um, so we're going to say that uh, the, we're just going to leave that speed undefined. We're just going to draw hollow circles at all these juncture points and just assume that it's an instantaneous jump between each of these speeds and here at the end as well. Now, there are some other ways you could possibly connect the junction points here, uh, and as long as you supply a pretty good argument for it, we can make a case for it. But one thing that must be true here is that the graph is like a bunch of stair steps, uh, 200, 0, negative 200, 300, 600, with no uh, intervening curves to connect all these things. All right, so to recap here, we found the speed of this person's traveling. Because this is a piecewise linear graph, it's composed of line segments joined together, I can read the speed by just reading the slope and do that for each of these five intervals, and then I can graph uh, those five values over here on the speed graph. Best of luck with these kinds of problems. Please uh, email me with questions if you have them, and good luck.